this is Goose. She's here for a dental cleaning today. Um, we've already done her physical exam and looked at her teeth, um, so we know that uh, she's not. She doesn't have any teeth that we expect to need extractions. Um, and we're also going to remove a little mass on her ear. So the first thing that we do preparing them for surgery is we give them a pre-medication. We've placed an IV catheter, um, so we're going to give her a little bit of a sedation and her pain medications preemptively so that those are on board um, by the time that she's in surgery. So uh, this first one is just flush. This will double check our IV catheter. That is good. And then this next syringe is the medication. <laughs> because we're giving it um, directly into the vein, it'll act pretty quickly. Um, so then we can check the rest of our monitoring. And then by the time we've checked all that, she will be sleepy and ready to go. This next injection is a pain medication. It, uh, it's a, a different type. It's an anti-inflammatory. Um, we'll go ahead and get this on board too since we know that she's going to have that mass removed. These are intubation tubes or ET tubes and basically what I'm doing is blowing up this balloon to make sure that they're going to hold pressure throughout the entire procedure um, and we pick a size that's going to fit for each patient. Um, and that just keeps the airway open so that we can make sure they're getting the right amount of anesthesia and oxygen throughout the procedure. All right, so the next step of the process is um, the intubation. Um, so again, we're going to check our catheter, make sure that um, it's still working, and then we're going to give her a medication IV called propofol. This will make her sleepy enough that we can pass a tube into the trachea to protect the airway uh, during the dental cleaning. Brenna's going to hold the mouth open really wide. We'll use the laryngoscope um, to see the back of the mouth there so that we know that whenever we're placing this tube, it's going into the trachea. We place a tie onto the tube so that we can tie it to the muzzle and know it's secure and it's not slipping or falling out during the procedure. We will lay her on her side. We'll hook her up to the oxygen and anesthesia machine and then we will check the seal on our, on our tube to make sure that it's a complete seal and that no uh, water can pass it during the procedure. Brenna's getting her hooked up to the monitoring equipment. Throughout the procedure, we'll be monitoring her heart rate, her respiratory rate, her oxygen saturation, her temperature, um, as well as just checking her anesthetic depth with the uh, jaw tone and her, her reflexes in her eyes. Okay, so this is blood pressure cuff and it just monitors blood pressure throughout the procedure. Lubricate the eyes since they can't blink on their own. It'll help protect the cornea. All right, so once she's hooked up to all the monitoring equipment and as long as we're doing well under anesthesia, the next step is to take some x-rays. Um, so Brenna's getting that set up right now. We take x-rays of all of the teeth so that we can see the, the tooth roots. Um, sometimes there's problems under the gum line that we can't see just during an exam. Um, so being sure that we're doing complete dental x-rays helps to make sure that we have a, a more thorough dental cleaning and that there's not problems that are hiding beneath the surface. So my goal is to get all the way from this canine to that canine. This is the probe or the plate and this is the dental x-ray machine just like a human dental x-ray machine would look. So here's a picture. I didn't get all the teeth I was looking for. Um, here are six front teeth. 
we wanted to see the root. So I got the root of the majority of all of these. Um, I did not get my canids, but I got the six insect ears. So then I'm going to move on to going down the side and I'll be able to get what I missed um, through that way too. So I'm scaling each and every tooth, just like your dentist would do with you with an ultrasonic scaler. Um, that we don't want to stay on a tooth for more than five seconds at a time just because it gets hot and it can damage that tooth. But we're going to try to get all the plaque and tartar off that we can. We do put gauze in the back of the mouth also to help keep from water and debris flying back there. Okay, the next step here is after we've reviewed the dental x-rays and she's scaled the teeth, we go through and probe each tooth. So we use this um, probe here and what we're doing is we're kind of going along the perimeter of each tooth and we're looking for pocketing, mobility, um, any abnormalities of the tooth that might indicate that that tooth needs to be removed. Um, as we're going through, we're also accounting for each tooth and making sure that there isn't previous um, missing teeth or um, anything like that. So we'll just start and do it in a very uh, systematic way so that nothing gets overlooked. As we're going, um, we have a dental chart. Um, so if any abnormalities are noted, um, we can just uh, tell that to Brenna and she can add it to the chart. Okay, so we have a little enamel defect, a little chip um, on 203. And here, uh, Goose has two of the same tooth right here. So this is um, tooth number 204. So she has two 205 teeth. That's kind of a a unique abnormality it's not causing her a problem so we're not going to remove that or do anything about it she's also missing a tooth right here so that she had two 205s a 206 she's missing 207 and 208 is our is our big chewing tooth here her teeth cleaned up nicely and so far they're probing normally um, so she's not going to need any removed here so next now that we looked at all the teeth and we scaled them i'm going to polish it so this is a and then Laura toothpaste and basically it's kind of gritty and it's going to go through and polish every tooth so any kind of abrasion or defect or in it is going to be gone so that way bacteria sticks to it less readily. Okay, one tooth down, half a mouth to go. So then we're going to flip her over, feet under, and start the whole process all over again and do the exact same thing, same thing on the other side of the mouth. But if I was done, the final step for her mouth would be to apply Oravet. Um, so Oravet is this teeny tiny thing here and it goes in an Oravet gun. And basically we squeeze it out and apply it to all of her dry teeth. Um, and what that does is it kind of helps remove a barrier for new plaque and calculus to form on our teeth and helps keep them healthy a little bit longer.